European football has recently been recorded to be worth a record £22 billion. And with more TV coverage than ever before, the sports broadcasting industry has become a battleground. On one side, Sky and BT are locking horns over the rights to the Football League. Meanwhile, smaller companies like White Label Media are having to take a more personal approach. Having secured contracts with Norwich, QPR and Hull, they are set to stream three football matches in the space of just two days to each team's unique subscription streaming service. You know, you try and do the best you can for a football club like QPR in the hope that you generate yourself a bit of a name. And that's basically what happened. And uh, Hull were approached by Joe um, to see if, if they might be interested in filming and streaming their football matches. And I think, uh, as far as I understand it, Hull had contacts at QPR. Um, so the work that we've done at QPR stood us in good stead to get, to get a contract, to drive really a contract with Hull. In a highly saturated football market, it is extremely difficult for smaller companies to compete. White Label, therefore, must work extremely closely with their clients to ensure their services are of more value than standard football coverage. In practice, this means their limited resources must be maintained and used to the best of their ability, which is why, when something goes wrong, company director Dan Haddon is soon on the case. Uh, hold on, that's interesting. That's interesting. I, th I think maybe working with, in a small company, sometimes you get um, fixated with the delivery of the here and now and doing things, working, yeah. working on the work. And rather, rather than, than on the business, yeah. definitely. You have yeah. to make time to work on the business, not just in the business, which is a difficult thing. And to acknowledge that you can't do everything. Yes, we can. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we do. We do. <laughs> yeah. So at the moment we're doing quite a lot of football. Um, that, that's good, but it is consuming us hugely and we do have to keep doing other things. And it's quite a struggle when we're doing all this football work to actually take on other work because some, some of the jobs that we might take on are quite large jobs. They take a lot of time and a lot of people to organise. So it's a huge effort to try and keep those extra chains going. I'd say the hardest part is when you have, say you've got three, because we've covered three football teams, so if we had three on the Saturday and then three on the Tuesday and then two on the following Saturday, it's trying to get, work out, say, the, what audio arrangement you've got, what cameras, lenses are going all over the country. We sort of see you're sending kits off to Swansea, etc. You can't just get it wrong. Having recently encountered some major equipment problems, the usual hull kit is being left at base to be checked over by Dan and Jeff. Instead, the crew will be taking the QPR kit, which was used just 12 hours prior at Loftus Road, meaning they must hope there is no equipment damage during such a busy period. To make matters worse, White Label have just been informed that they will also be contending on-site with other, much larger broadcasters, including the likes of Sky, ITN and NEP, who will all be filming and broadcasting the same match to their relevant channels. So it's a strange landscape at the moment for um, broadcast at OB uh, football in the Championship. We could potentially have um, three separate OB outfits all filming the same game tonight. So we're doing it for the Hull online television station called Tigers TV, that's us. And we do home and away games for them. There's a company called NEP who are going to be doing it for, I believe, the EFL website. And that's another three or four camera OB. And then there will be another camera one, which is the big wide camera, the match camera. And that's going to be for Sky Red Button. And on top of that, there may well be a separate Sky camera there for their live feed into Gillette midweek. So there's, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six cameras on the gantry. Plus there's going to be at least two analyst cameras from Hull and two from Bristol. So that's, uh, that takes up to ten cameras on the gantry, all filming the same thing. So uh, there's always a few little bun fights about who has their camera where, especially away because we're coming with Hull, really. So Bristol City are gonna give the EFL guys, the Visions guys, the prime spots. Because we're the away team, 
um, we're going to have to just pick up the pieces. So we could get there, and we're going to Camera One's not going to be central to the halfway line, and so we're going to just find the next best place for that to be. There's also issues with rig and fibre boxes and all this kind of stuff, so it's going to be a fun one today. Obviously, any P people like that are good at providing massive OBEs, multiple cameras, but obviously there's a cost with that one, because they've got 30 crew on it, catering buses, and whereas the white label thing's a bit bit smaller scale, as you could say, but it, it's, it's done and it provides a service. So they're travelling around the, foot, the country every week in the back of a high transit van, running out of a little PPU, doing the exact same thing as NEP, for example, doing a Wednesday night at QPR when they provide 30 crew, multiple sound assistants, and we've got an engineer doing sound, sorting cameras, the lot. You can't just turn up, like Sky can just turn up if they haven't done a recce, like any P don't, I don't think they, yeah. you know, go beforehand to everything, they've been years past. But we have to make sure that we know exactly where we're going, because we haven't got big trucks full of kit. We have to make sure that we know exactly the cable runs, we have to know where we're plugging into, whether we need to take fibres, whether we need to take simpty, some grounds are just fibre grounds. Yeah. We have to know all that side of things, and we have to have it all worked out. We don't just rock up, <laughs> like, we plan all this. We yeah. It's really yeah, yeah. planned yeah. to within an inch of its life and ours. As the crew arrive at Ashton Gate, they are met with their first encounter with rivals NEP, who have already laid claim to the car park. Oh, it's, 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 it's a minor inconvenience to start off with. Namely, we've arrived and... Um, we don't appear to be on the list for anything, so they're pretty nonplussed about the idea of us parking. So we were told we can't place the van here, which thankfully now they've done a UE on. And our original plan of parking the van here, building the PPU in here, and doing everything remotely uh, has also gone belly up. So currently what's happening now is half to have gone on a recce to check the routes that we're going to have to carry manually all this kit up and then um, we're going to have to lug it all up there which is going to be interesting. So despite managing to negotiate some parking for the van, with NEP occupying most of the fibre and power outlets, the white label crew must now transport all of their gear to the gantry where they will have to base their production unit. update now. Uh, we've passed the initial front kick stage, the rig's generally underway, we've got all the stuff for the PPU uh, built, um, we're just getting signals up from the cameras. As you can see the gantry is quite busy, so we've had to share everything along, which means we're quite far spread out, lots of horrendously long paving runs, uh, lots of power extensions on power extensions. Uh, unfortunately this gantry isn't quite the best for lots of certain miles power, but other than that, it's hopefully coming together. The car park isn't the only battleground the white label crew must fight in today. They must also confront the broadcasting giants again for the best camera positions, which, as expected, hasn't gone their way. So, obviously, because of the fact that this is bang on the halfway line, the work down there, uh, you always want your camera one and ideally your camera two to be slap bang in the centre. And of course, because NEP have that priority, they get both moved just by the side. Unfortunately, we do always play second fiddle. We always have to have, they always get the best positions, so we have to make it work. And we do make it work because most of the times we go out on these OBs and we know all the people on the Sky OBs we've met them all before, they're people that we've worked with, and we do have to sort of negotiate, yeah. but we haven't yet failed. We, when we go out on site, we make sure that the client is, you know, we have to work with the client very much more than Sky. Sky are 
big behemoth and they say here we are and we're coming to your um, ground whereas we have to be a lot more you know we're going to work with you can we do this can we yeah. do that and we have to sort of make sure that you know we work within the company that we're going to always we that's yeah that's part of our you know we become part of the team on site yeah uh, from my point of view in engineering uh, i've noticed that uh, when i used to work for anglia that name anglia or itv had clout when you were dealing with people particularly suppliers um if i would ring up a supplier about some issue or whatever as soon as they knew i worked for itv then they tended to pull out all the stops and um, go the extra mile to sort us out. But I've noticed since working for White Label, when I ring up those very same suppliers, they're not interested in a company of three people. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that, that's been quite interesting. <laughs> As the crew come close to completing the rig, disaster strikes. There's some sort of horrible hum up there. You can hear it. Yeah, I don't know where it's coming from. When testing the kit, engineer Tom has found a hum in the commentator's headphones, something which wouldn't go down well with clients Hull City, who are providing the match commentator for the game. That is still there. Still there. Yeah. yeah. So it is that. I might go for B. It's back. It's back. Check, check, check. Uh, okay. Hello. But the buzz is now back. Right. Now it's gone. It's in and out. Now it's loud. Now it's gone. I think it's where you are. As in with the mic. No, maybe not. That's making no difference. Hello. But is it is it coming from the same source as the rest of the PPU? You are. Is the power coming from the same is it on the same? Oh, it's all on the same, yeah, yeah. Do change his lead? We changed two of them, I don't know. Yeah. No. There's no. Is there any hum now? Yes. Hum now? Yes. Still hum. Okay, so it's not the lead. Uh, I'm going to reroute the cables. Have we swapped the XLRs? Yeah, we've had it done three um, XLRs. Stopped power. Change cable route. I'm like that, yeah, idea. The crew then decide to try the commentary headset rather than the preferred traditional lit mic. This won't be the commentator's ideal choice. But if it works, then it'll have to be used as the crew begin to run out of time. We've got this headset. Look at that bad boy. Let's go get tea. Yes. There is a deep sigh of relief amongst the crew. With the whole ground now rigged and the microphone issue put to bay, they must have a quick break before getting into position for the live broadcast. Hull City fans tuning in online will only judge the broadcast on what they see live, so all of their efforts up to now will have been for nothing should any problems arise on air. Come out wider. On three, so on one. On there, two. Three for the throwing. Three, one, one. Two go for the throw, actually, three can come out. In the middle this time, Bristol City with some decent one touch football. Now they go wide. Building an attack nicely here, Bristol City. Shot comes in, saved by Marshall. Zicky 
following some poor defending from Bristol City. Martin, who wants it from Holtman? It takes a deflection, Kane gets across, and then Bristol City has to swing their foot at it again. Right, 19, On the half time whistle, two, and you pick up Hull, go either 17, 25, or 20. Three, pick up Bristol, either 19, 20, or 8. Hunt with a really good through ball. What's the cross like? Met by Jordi De Vice. And that will be the final piece of attacking action. A successful first half for the white label crew. However, as the second half begins, their limited resources begin to show when James Watson, who is working the role of both graphics and replay operator, forgets to insert the game clock. Three, got manager. Are you doing the clock? No worries. Two out of the corner. Two. Three come to group in front of the goal. Tom, check black levels on three. Black levels up on three. Oh, let's have that. I haven't got a replay. No, okay, no worries. Whilst White Label were dealing with some drama off the pitch, on the pitch, the main action was saved until the very last minute. Out wide here for Bristol City, it's Taylor on the edge of the box, he steps inside! Marshall gets a save in! And Bristol City score! So with the game successfully broadcast, the crew must now pack up and get some well-deserved rest before travelling back to base. This lends for an ideal time to reflect on their performance and whether bigger clubs could buy into White Label's more personal approach in a highly competitive sports broadcasting industry. So we're, we're on our way back from Bristol. We overnighted last night because it's such a long way from Norwich. So yeah, it went, it, went, it went all right yesterday. It's always a bit of a pig having to take everything up to the gantry. but. Cameras all seem to work, I don't think there were too many major technical issues. But yeah, all in all, I think fairly successful. I think. Um, my label at the moment, instead of having a relationship generically with the championship, they're trying to have a really good relationship with two or three football clubs to do their home and away games. Now, that's fine, so there's two different ways of doing it. It's going to depend on what the clubs want. So, Hull, for example, have Tigers TV, and we can tailor, the white label can tailor their footage to that Tigers TV requirement. If they were working with NEP on an off the shelf basis, they probably wouldn't be able to do that. So, they wouldn't be able to feed in graphics, they wouldn't be able to have their own commentator, they wouldn't be able to do any of that kind of stuff because it could just be that they get the goal package and there is a neutral commentator and some generic graphics and they just take it and broadcast it. So it really is going to be down to whether the clubs feel that they want to own that content stream or they want to just take it on a generic hard follow plan. So it's just going to be up to what they want to do. For now, White Label will continue to operate independently of conventional football coverage, something which just a few clubs are currently buying into, although they will be hoping this remains the case to avoid being forced out by Sky's football monopoly.